iGPU's always kind of gotten a bad rap. Okay, sure, for the most part, iGPU's can't run the latest games, and in a lot of cases, not even older ones. If you're trying to run Railroad Tycoon 2 Gold Edition though, well, that's a different conversation. But this video isn't about gaming on iGPU's. iGPU's are boring, and that's why they're valuable. Especially if you do AI or virtualization slash pass-through experiments. Or anything that isn't gaming. iGPU's are more than sufficient for machines that spend their lives, or at least the early portion of their lives, doing everyday work. Things like Excel, PowerPoint, and Word, etc. A lot of people don't need cutting-edge graphics. And they don't need a discrete card just to coexist with an office desktop. What they usually need is something that can reliably drive a display. And these days, that's something that can drive maybe a little more than over 2 million pixels, or 1080p. For at least the last decade and a half, it's been trivially easy to do that with a small amount of die space on a CPU, and a little bit of system memory. But time and again, I found myself happy that I bought a CPU with a lame, boring iGPU. Really, it saved me multiple times. Yes, you've probably heard it time and again, especially since the whole crypto mining craze in 2021, that it's better to pay the extra $20 for cheap insurance just so you can at least turn on a system if you don't have a discrete GPU. I don't need to tell you that drivers can break or gremlins of all sorts can mysteriously cause you to not get a display signal once startup. An iGPU can also act as a good fallback, such as when your single discrete GPU is experiencing a clash between a compute task and basic display rendering responsibilities. This sort of thing doesn't happen often, but you may find yourself running an inference or other sort of compute intensive task that needs exactly every ounce of your GPU's die or VRAM or both and the resources used to show things on your monitor is the difference between the compute task running or not. It may take a couple of times to put together what may be happening, but it's nice to have the option of maybe changing a setting in your BIOS if it already isn't set correctly, and moving your display cable from a port on your GPU to the motherboard. Having an iGPU doesn't only act as a sort of overflow outlet when display out is too much, it also allows you to keep expansion slots does anyone say expansion slots anymore? Free for multiple big discrete GPUs. Instead of worrying about where you can squeeze a tiny, likely old, likely beat up GPU for display out too. So you don't have to worry as hard about how many PCIe slots you have or where you would have to put video out, a uh, video out card. You don't have to buy older low profile cards that would essentially be unitaskers, where even the likes of the UHD 770 is probably surpassing the performance of those cards. Packing as many transistors onto the die of a GPU as possible seems to be the order of the day. All across contemporary discrete GPU model stacks, the focus is primarily on full-width, multi-slot cards unless you're looking for something nearly a decade old, or even older. You'll be looking at cards that cost at least $150 US, and potentially a card that packs maybe more power than you actually need, in a small form factor like those SFF low-profile 40 and 5060s that sell for $250 to $300, at least in saner times. Now, if there were 16 gigabyte versions of these SFF 5060s, it might be a different story. Hello, Intel Arc B50. I'm not saying you should build your next system around an iGPU, and really, the iGPU in your next system may pack quite a punch if the announcements at last week's CES keynotes are any indicator. I'm saying that the extra $20 for the boring ones available today has saved me more times than I can count. They prevent inference experiments from going sideways, and GPU pass-through from going nowhere, and not having to worry about changes to airflow, and avoiding having to buy questionable and old little cards just to see things on my monitor. It's not exciting, but for me, it's made things easier.